<laughs> All right, there we are. Welcome to OMG. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm Truthman from Overclocking TV. Obviously, by the time uh, you should uh, know my no my face, and uh, this is Tima. Hey guys, uh, it's nice to be here again today. As usual, in tonight we have a special guest. Uh, we have a special guest. It's Irotrax. How are you doing, man? Hey guys, it's great to be on the show. <laughs> so our tracks uh, maybe for people know us but people might not know you um so let's uh, go quickly over the introduction tell us about uh, who you are what you're doing in life uh what nickname are you known under and uh, what makes you take well i'm moritz uh i'm currently a student close to berlin in germany uh, i started extreme overclocking about four years ago that's when i met Truth and you for the first time, and yeah, I've been sticking with it, and yeah, still overclocking. That's good. Uh, I remember that was the uh, was that like the the event in was in the, Germany that we were trying to. It was the boot camp. Uh, the boot, yes. camp? boot camp. It was yeah. the ROG camp. Yeah. ROG oh. camp. Yeah, that's right. So for those who don't know this one, it's kind of like um. It's like a, like a overclocking school kind of thing where you learn how to insulate your motherboard most likely for the first time or something like that. People that go there already have experience with overclocking, right? Yes. Water and air. Yeah. So how did you perform at this one? Oh, I, I got lucky. I think uh, I, I finished second in a competition, so that, that was a lot of fun. Ah, nice. So the morning is teaching and then the afternoon you have a small camp or was it two days? One day teaching and the next day? I think that was yeah. one day teaching and one day competition. Right. One day teaching and drinking and second day competition. <laughs> and drinking. <laughs> yeah, you're in Germany, obviously. <laughs> well, uh, so you say you're still a student. Uh, what kind of uh, topic you're studying? Uh, engineering. Uh, in that is power management and the other half is business business administration. So well, that's Power what I management. Is that useful it's, for what you're doing in terms of overclocking, or is that totally unrelated? It's a it's a different voltage number, so it, it deals with power <laughs> grids and stuff. <laughs> Ever try to overclock stuff over there? <laughs> that would not go over well. Yeah, it's like, hey, this is the uh, official like uh, Germany company for electricity. Uh, we have some uh, overclocked uh, issue on the grid. Sorry, uh, we have a suspect. Blackout. <laughs> I didn't mean to. <laughs> so you're supposed to get 220. Well, we're sending like 280. Deal with it. <laughs> Clock <in. laughs> Today, I felt like we could do it. Uh, that's cool. Very nice. All right. So uh, this is OMG. We talk about overclocking, modding, and gaming. Uh, well, tonight we might be talking about overclocking and gaming. Uh, yeah, I think we'll... we'll so initially for tonight, in uh, addition uh, to Moritz, uh, we also had planned... Uh, two other guests, which were case mothers, uh, to talk about. Um, so one of them is at DreamHack in uh, Leipzig, Germany, uh, which is going on basically starting. I think today they're it's setting already up, started, yeah. and so now it's the, yeah one of the first day and it lasts for the whole weekend. And there's a modding competition down there. Uh, he was supposed to help us out, but then there's some family stuff went in the way. So what? What is not done this week is going to be done next week. So he's going to still be going there for the weekend and we'll have pictures to share for next week. So uh, he will be there next week to talk about that. So no worries. So less mudding this time, but it gives us but more have, room to talk about. Uh, we have a lot of things to talk about. Uh, the first things to talk about in the overclocking side, uh, the Intel Core i9-9990XE uh, shows up in benchmark that was done from a budget system, which is... Uh, uh, system integrator in the US and that CPU is not something you can buy on the retail market. Uh, what, what is funny though is that the uh, 9990XE, this is, it's Core 9, 9999, no, 9990XE, so yeah, that's mind-blowing. And it's only 14 cores, uh, when the 9980XE was actually 18 cores, so that's uh, interesting to see that the number is higher, but then the number of cores is lower and stuff like that. Uh, but the base frequency is at 4 GHz and the max turbo boost is at 5.1 and all core boost is at 5 GHz, which is the highest all, um, all core turbo boost for uh, this high core count CPU. So that's pretty interesting to see that they managed to put that out on the market, even though you cannot buy it, I cannot buy it as end users, you cannot buy it at end users. This is only made for system integrators. Uh, 
Uh, so that's why Puget System, which is a system integrator in the US, could do that. And from what we heard, it was made on auction only. So that was only for, uh, there's no official price for it as well. So even if you want to go to Intel, say, yeah, I have two grants for it. And then say, we don't sell it. So no, right. deal with it. There's actually a lot of stuff like that on the data center side. Uh, from the last report, and I can't remember if that was on Forbes or IDC, about 50% uh, of what Intel is selling as CPU for the data centers are actually special kind of CPU. So basically CPUs that will never be on the market. It's not it's not some kind of Xeon with the name tag that you can oh, buy like a uh, off the shelf. Yeah, it's usually yeah. custom version for like, uh, like the huge computational data centers and so on. So this is basically the same concept being adapted to uh, the retail market on the B2C side, on the customer no, side. I think it's interesting because when you look actually at the, um, at the results they got in the test, uh, you can actually switch to my screen if you want people uh, yeah, to see that's that. A, that's a good point. Um, they, so they, what, what, what Project System does, uh, they build workstations for people that do either video rendering or animation work or stuff like that. And uh, every time they have a new CPU in the house, a new graphics card, or they're building a system with it, uh, they benchmark not just that system, but also just um, down to the CPU level. Uh, and um, so they have those uh, sets of stuff they're running through. And um, it's interesting for that uh, they are doing that because, of course, they are doing it to show to their own customers uh, uh, what the new chips can do and help them make the right choice, right, obviously. Uh, but you can see also the kind of performance you, they got on those CPUs, and it's pretty uh, pretty good, actually. If you look compared to the other processors, uh, on this one, Pix4D, um, which is mostly like a pixel kind of like a based workflow for images and things like that, um, so 9990XE. Um, See, that's difficult to yeah, say, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it scored, scored actually uh, pretty well. So, um, of course, the, the lowest, the better here. Um, you have a um, bunch of other scores. I encourage you to go there. Uh, it's a pretty detailed article. Um, and I have that for also all kinds of other hardware. So if, you, uh, if you're looking, for example, for another source of uh, scores and benchmark scores for... Um, basically a purchasing decision or something like that. Uh, budget is always a kind of place I recommend on top of, you know, especially the usual, you, like yeah. an intake and the other. And especially places. if you do video editing mm -hmm. and creator works, they have an extensive suite of benchmarking results. They have sure. their own benchmarks too, like yeah. uh, that are kind of like a tweaked version of uh, Photoshop that launch batch jobs, which they run every time. You can even download it so you can try it on your own machine, um, which is kind of cool. So every time it's the same test that they are doing and they're comparing, of course, the different generations. So it's really interesting, especially in the, like you mentioned, in the video and, and pictures. Ah, it's always fun to, uh, to look at. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, next topic about the uh, overclocking side was the uh, release by Anantech of their CPU buying recommendation for gaming in 2019. Uh, you can go check it out on anantech.com. Uh, I wanted to put it in there because it's always the most recurring question that we get on the show. Um, basically, you can just check uh, in there what are the different you know, uh, CPU you should use for what kind of games. And they talk about the overclocking of each of the SKUs. So for example, if they recommend uh, a Ryzen 5 or uh, a Core i5, for example, they say, hey, if you take this one, you can overclock and this is what you could expect from it. So that was a very nice, uh, and a very nice uh, way to actually put that around. So I liked it. So that's why I want to talk about that. A uh, second thing about add-on take as well uh, was the mini ITX uh, fight between the Z3 uh, the Asus ROG Strix Z390i Gaming against the ASRock Z390 Phantom Gaming ATX slash AC. Right, so that's something for people that like small form factors. It's a uh, it's good, and there was some overclocking as well in there. Okay. Um, Gab Gab managed to get the, both of the config to five gigahertz, and you can see like the small difference. Uh, in there. Uh, what was interesting in there as well was the AI optimized settings against the 5G profile settings in the BIOS. Uh, it was actually way more efficient when you set the uh, the system to do the AI optimized, which is the AI version of overclocking on the ASUS board. Uh, it was actually uh, more efficient than just, oh yeah, I want the 5G profile. So that's, uh, that's good to see that overclocking and uh, power management actually uh, go in and in for that one. Uh, in terms of AI overclocking, Wizard T has been doing a lot of videos this week about that as well. Uh, it deep dive into the, is that the gene? 
or that was the Apex? No, it wasn't the Apex board. No, that wasn't the Apex board, yeah. yeah. So the D390 Apex but motherboard. But also the D390 boards have it. Yeah. So it's not just the Apex. So the AI overclocking feature uh, in like a deep dive, uh, we will post the link on the on the chat and so on. The thing is, the uh, it's in French, but it's uh, pretty detailed. So if you want to give it a look, that's always uh, cool. So wizard, W-I-Z-E-R-T-Y on all the social medias as well. So YouTube, um, Twitch channel, and so on. Uh, speaking of overclockers doing videos as well, uh, the Viking stopped slacking. The so Viking. The Viking stopped slacking. Uh, Joe is out with a new video from Bearded Hardware. Bearded, beard, uh, whatever. Joe, Bearded, Bearded Hardware. Bearded Hardware. Uh, <laughs> Is out with a new video and is talking as well of the uh, Z390 Apex motherboard. Uh, on this one, it's a short video, like less than five minutes, so it's pretty uh, yeah, good unboxing and then yeah. talking about the specs and the features and stuff like that. That was good, interesting one. And on to the topic of tonight. Uh, Lucky Noob managed to get two gigahertz on the core of the Radeon 7, but we have the chance to have AeroTracks with us that do have a card on end or very close to. On hand, actually, right there. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> so that's yeah, nice. I've, I've had the so, so what's going there. on with this one? So what are, what have you been doing? How how have you been testing it? I I pre-ordered this thing, and for the first week or so, uh, overclocking was broken. You could only overclock it in windowed mode, not in full screen. And two nights ago, we finally got a working driver that allowed proper overclocking, and I went on to make some tests. Um, the stock cooler is not as bad as some reviewers make it out to be. Uh, if you undervolt your card, leaving it at stock clocks, it will be okay for noise. <laughs> so, uh, if you overclock it a little, 100 megahertz, that's still okay with the stock cooler, but it will revert back to the stock fan profile, which is 3000 RPM. And that is quite annoying. <laughs> so, uh, so that's no, the silent mode, I suppose. Part. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then if you really overclock the card up to 2000 megahertz, you need a full RPM fan curve. I think that's close to 4000 RPM. That's that's a starting jet engine, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it, but it's it's not very pleasant at all. So you can you can see the card is two slots and uh, right here there is an air outlet and there's a little one and that's pretty much it. On this side it's open, but you have the motherboard. So there's not a whole lot of ways for the air to escape. Then again, it's two slots, so the cooler is not very thick, and yeah, we end up with thermal problems. Mm. So it's basically blowing a bit of the hot air on the motherboard. Right. Um, actually, I had to add cooling on my memory because it pushes the hot air towards the memory, so a good case fan is, is needed, or it may actually result in a memory-related blue screen due to temperature. Did that something that you had uh, during your testing as well? Yes, I had to. So even during daily use, it crashes without a fan on my memories, <laughs> which is why I'm excited for any kind of water cooling solution, which we don't have yet. Yeah, actually, that was my my next uh, my next question because uh, these default uh, cards like that have three fans on this. We don't have the blower style anymore as well. Uh, this right. definitely looks high end uh, as well, rather than just the uh, high end card with the blower that looks. Yeah, yes, cheap in does. the past. So that it's it's good looking. It's very good looking for for a new card like that. Um, do you have already a way to remove that coolers and switch it with something else, or you're just waiting for a full size water block to be uh, put on this one? I have a EK Universal block, the Supremacy VGA, and it does not fit uh, because of the HBM. The package is so large, and I cannot mount that cooler. So I'm stuck with a stock cooler for now. There's no no hack you could do to, to, to yes, switch there that is, in actually. a way. Yeah, I haven't done it myself, but I've seen it on the internet. So there's, I think, the latest revision of the Ace Tech uh, all-in-one coolers. They fit on there. You can strap them or screw them. I don't know. So I saw some guy. Uh, he, he, he took those two fans. He took them out. And I think, yeah, the AIO, it just went below that because it's so thin and he he mounted it, and this fan, uh, it was still on there and provided VRM cooling. <laughs> it does look yeah. quite ghetto, but it's, it seems to work. And uh, then the guys, they could really start pushing voltage on it, which is not possible with the with the stock cooler. Oh, oh well, I guess you, you got to make your way to, to get what you want from it. Have you tried um, 
other types of cooling than the air cooler so far? Not yet, no, no. I have I have a single stage, but I haven't yet had the balls to <laughs> actually mount it and cool it. <laughs> I mean, the, the overclocking driver has been out for a couple of days now, so yeah, I had to mm. get my, my stock testing done. So on the website, they advertise it for 700 US. Uh, yeah. Is that the price you ended up paying for it or no. I mean, plus no, German I, customs, I, I suppose? <laughs> with shipping and, and stuff, I paid 760 euros which is, in my opinion, a very bad price for this card. But I wanted it and I bought it. So that's my yeah. excuse. It's the, it's the cost of being a fanboy. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to have stuff on release date, uh, it's going to be expensive. Yeah. Were, were you able to uh, to play with the, like the, the NVIDIA cards, like 2080s and uh, stuff like that? I mean, to compare basically two of their flagship cards in terms of uh, finishing of the product and not just raw performance because I mean obviously performance they are different but um, and so did you were you able to do that? I haven't had the Turing cards but I had a 1080 Ti Lightning from MSI which was yeah. a very high high end Pascal card. Um, overclocking on that one was not fun at all because it didn't scale with voltage. It had a pretty hard limit on max clocks no matter if it was mm -hmm. on on air or on water. It just didn't move at all and uh, the Vegas what's it Radiant 7 it's it's pretty versatile so you can you can give it volts and it takes them as long as the stock cooler allows for it but um, there's many many things to play with also the power limit there are already registry hacks so you can disable them and uh, the voltage can also be I think lifted up to 1.24 volts with the registry hack as well so these things they are quite open and you will be able to have a lot of fun with them once once you water cool them yeah so you posted on Facebook I'm switching to the um, to that table you posted there um, stuff about those voltages so can you run us through that table and the numbers and what they mean okay so first I think we should start with the stock voltages uh, so far I've seen around 11 at 1040 millivolts to 1110 so that's that's a spread of 70 millivolts and the actual overclocks you get they can differ a lot my card it has it on the graphic it's 1.08 volts stock which is the middle of the pack, basically. Uh, so it's mm -hmm. it's it's not a great card. It's it's average. Um, so yeah, I started out with undervolting it, so maintaining stock voltage, stock performance, and lowering the voltage. So I was able to lower it to 950 millivolts. So that's 120 millivolt undervolt, uh, and having the card still fully stable with the stock fan profile. So AMD on these cards, they are heavily overvolting most of these cards and it's a new process 1.08 volts that's a lot for that new mm -hmm. process so basically they're shipping them at the maximum <laughs> volts you should give them on the stock cooler so <laughs> you're saying that basically most of those cards are probably hotter than what they should actually be anyway they are they, a lot hotter yes be, yeah. yes okay so dialing it down to 950 millivolts, the card gets quiet. Uh, using the stock fan profile, I get around 2000 RPM, which is not noisy at all. It's not great, but I think never an AMD reference card has been this quiet by undervolting it. So it's 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 okay. It's not mm -hmm. great, but it's okay. Uh, then I started clocking it um, for the first 100 megahertz increase to 1900. It's it's a 5% performance boost and a stock cooler it can cope with it uh, it reverts back to the stock profile with the fan so it's 3000 rpm which is it's noisy but well you, you, your ears will not start bleed with it so <laughs> you can get five performance five percent more performance out of the box without doing it anything to it so that's i think good news for uh, a reference card yep. then moving uh, further the scores here, uh, which benchmark are those scores for? It's Fire Strike, Strike, right? Oh, right, right, right? So that's the 1440p, uh, the 1080p or whatever it is. That's It doesn't load the card properly. So this is the one I think best <laughs> to choose. Yeah. Okay, and then what are the way about to say, sorry? Yeah, going all the way to 2000 megahertz, the stock fan profile really is not enough anymore. It needs 100% fan, 4000 RPM, uh, you need headphones. Uh, it'll do it, but it's bad. <laughs> and with that, 
you can get a 10% overclock, 10% more in performance, but it means a massive power draw, uh, massive cooling requirement. And uh, on water, on water, it will be okay, I think, but on air, no way. So yeah. if you think about it, don't do it on air. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's not good. So actually, yeah, uh, uh, what what do they rate the card at for power consumption? It's 300 no. watts stock. Oh, okay. So if you manually overclock, plus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh, it's a good heater for the winter. Well, well, if you live in a cold country like us, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's uh, some pretty extensive um, no testing. How long did you did it take you to do like this uh, like early testing for it? Well, this early testing that was I think one evening. <laughs> Uh, the driver still has some small kinks, but mainly it's working well. So it's applying clocks and the memory clock, it, it, it applies that as well. As for the memory clock said, we haven't discussed that yet. Uh, the slider mm. goes up to 1200 megahertz on the uh, stock. Whatman, every card does that. So out of the box, 1200 megahertz memory, that's, that's very nice. And I think there are some registry hacks to go beyond that. So I've seen people do 1250, 1270 megahertz on the memory side. But then again, I'm not sure how necessary that is because the stock bandwidth on this card is already insane. Uh, this is due to, to HBM and the, and the way it's built like this and so close as well. Yes, it has four stacks and like a 4096 bit memory bus. And it has, I think, almost twice as much bandwidth as, as the 2080 Ti. That's that's insane. That's that's crazy. Uh, the only way to overclock the card today is with Wattman. That's correct. Right. So uh, there is no voltage monitoring, which is bad. Uh, clock monitoring is also kind of shifty. It it sometimes reads wrong values. Uh, power monitoring doesn't really work. Uh, it fluctuates 200 watts up and down. So there is no way this can be real. <laughs> Uh, That's within Whatman, right? The, the, the... Within what? Yeah, Whatman has an overlay, which is right. it, it's very convenient and it shows some things. I think the only thing that it's good for is the frame counter. <laughs> like frost. <fries. laughs> yes. Okay. Well, well, that's a bit of a. I guess it must be a, not not like a letdown, but you would would have thought that from one version to the next of Whatman and new cards, you have got more features, more like something of a. Of uh, either Precision X or something like that that you you kind of used to from the uh, you know from all those custom cards basically. Um, well, the first first feature yeah. in week two was overclocking, so I think we're going to be moving on from that. But it will take time, and unfortunately, yeah. this thing has been rushed, and it's still very much beta. I think. Mm. Well, that yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure we're going to see improvement over the next few uh, weeks and few months. Uh, definitely, every time at launch, that's the same for any kind of hardware. Uh, you are the early adopter, so you have to deal with all that, you know, like bits and bytes and, and, and small uh, challenges with the softwares and the drivers and so on. But it's good that the week after, like, everything was fixed for the overclocking side. Well, so it, means they it. Do, it means they do consider it for sure. I mean, it's better than if it wasn't, ha it would not have been fixed and would have been like they probably either didn't have the time or didn't care. But if they did fix it, then it means there was someone probably at AMD that actually did care about it and the efforts into adjusting that so that's good and i like the fact that uh, the bandwidth will be it will be insane as well i mean uh if the calculation from dagon z are correct uh radeon 7 stock is about like <coughs> one terabyte per second of uh, of bandwidth approximately when the 2080 ti is about six uh, 680 if dagon z is correct on the calculation and it's, that's insane but i don't see what uh we'll see we not we have to see what's the use case as well for that as well uh, it's good to have high bandwidth. Uh, now we need to a good way to use it. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's supposed to be like a, the first seven nanometer graphic card as well. Uh, even though I don't think the HBM is at seven nanometers, but uh, the the chip itself is supposed to be at seven nanometers. Uh, did you saw any difference with that, or for you it's just like a new technology anyway, or a new card, and you just play with it, uh, whatever happened? In, in practice, it doesn't have any impact. Uh, the card itself overclocks very much like uh, the Vega on the old process, so but with higher clocks. And obviously, with the smaller, uh, with the bigger density, you have more heat on less area. So, yeah, it's it's 
harder to cool, but otherwise it has no actual impact. What, what do you expect actually from, from AMD and from the Radeon 7 and the series that might come with it? Uh, what do you expect from that specific part of the uh, of the market and from your own opinion, Mr. Well, first of all, the 7 was supposed to be a shrink. So it's it's the old stuff with with the new technology. So I'm not surprised it it's it's, it's not leaps and bounds ahead of anything else. Uh, what the 7 nanometer truly will bring, we'll have to see with the Navi that's supposed to come later this year. So for now, it's, it's improved Vega. Uh, that's what it is. That, that, that was funny talking about uh, about Vega like this because uh, Dagonzi again was saying like everybody is talking about the Radeon Seven and I just got Vega. Well, you know, <laughs> or the architecture is very similar, if not the same. Uh, right. Just the the process is changing on it. But then again, every time there's a new card coming, there's always people that will go for the previous card, right? Because that's the best moment to to get it. I mean, it's probably at the best price you will ever get it for, and it's probably among the last units that are either being manufactured or still in stock or whatever. That means that not just AMD is going to drop the price, but also the distributors that still have stock, um, they want to clear it because they know there's the new one and everyone is talking about it and wants it and might not buy it right now, but that is the next thing. So, I mean, it's, um, there's no shame in, in buying the previous cards at a great deal. If it's a great deal, it's a great deal. And if it's if it's uh, in there for all the needs you might have for gaming or may have, then uh, good for you. It's uh, it's perfect. Well, if the, it fits 56 the need... is very cheap in Germany now. It's 260 yeah. euros, I, I think, and it has the free game bundle. It's insane. It's so... a bargain, yeah. If you uh, The games are like 60 bucks each anyway, right? I think so, yes. Yeah. Uh, it's, usually it's a, a AAA game. Yeah. So you need a water cooler or an aftermarket air cooler, but still, it's insanely cheap. Yeah, that's nice. It's a good deal for sure. It shows also if they are doing uh, bundles like that. It also shows how 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 much they want to actually clear the stock, right? It's also like uh, for them, it's like top priority. Get them out. So and they it's literally have for no the new competition. Card. I think. I mean, the the ten seventy sure is out of stock. The RTX twenty sixty is very expensive. So yeah. Yeah, and it's people like don't want to buy used uh, mining cards anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away from those. <laughs> you you can't trust anything on eBay right now. If it has yeah. a little speck of dust, uh, <laughs> stay away from it. Stay away uh, from it. Never put in a computer. Yeah, right. Yeah. Was it put in a mining farm? The the worst is when you read uh, like a GTX 1070. Never mind, or you know, like 980 Ti. Has never mind, or whatever. You know, it's like uh yeah, right. Barely if you're just, saying it, yeah. you have something to hide. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's 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 quite crazy. Um, do you want to say anything else about Radeon Seven, or do we move to the game side of the show? Well, I think we've pretty much covered it. Perfect. Uh, just before moving to the game side, uh, what what is your last famous score that you did? Do you remember? My last famous score? Yeah, that, one of your good score you you had recently on overclocking, except on Radeon Seven. Except on the Radeon Seven. Uh... Last year in the summer, there was an overclocking party in Philadelphia, which I attended, and I had mm -hmm. a six core 8086K. And at the time, I took several records for that for that six core for the 8086. I think I did 6.92 gigahertz on Cinebench R15. I did seven gigahertz GPU Pi, and that was a lot of fun. <laughs> that that's with. Uh, by the way, last questions. What is your favorite benchmark? My favorite benchmark that would probably be SuperPi 32M. Ah, you're part of the SuperPi gang. Interesting. Yes. <laughs> I recently bought a Maximus 9 Apex again just to run XP and 32M on it. Oh, you're part of that crowd as well, like the uh, <laughs> the XP people. <laughs> Those people that at launch complain because there's no XP support. <laughs> right. I haven't complained. I just bought the old board again. <laughs> and slapped the 9900k on it so i'm fine yeah that, <laughs> that's that is a funny part all right uh, moving into uh, modding well there's nothing this week <laughs> yeah no modding we're gonna talk about that next week so le let's keep it warm for now uh no no modding to mention this week next week we're uh, we're gonna have i think uh, probably a show almost dedicated to modding because we have plenty of content and if 
all the three mothers that we actually tried to have for this week show up next week then uh it should be we should be packed with news and cool stuff and and, and we need four hours but that's a different story <laughs> ah yeah well you know it's okay all right uh, on to the gaming side uh one week since apex legends is out mm -hmm. uh it's insane um, uh i saw it played i just tested like like two three minutes uh, yeah. It's very fun. It's very fun to play, and uh, the game is already going so strong that they break. They broke the Fortnite supremacy, per se. Um, I think they had more than twenty-five million registered users, and I was uh, the guys at the, um, at the studio that say that. And I think it was like over two million concurrent player over the first weekend, which mm -hmm. was last weekend. That was just just. It's literally insane. To see that uh, a game that launched like, hey, by the way, here's our new game, and then that many people are are playing it, so definitely getting a, an eye on this one. I really need to you know, focus, like dedicate like three or three or four hours of my time and just try to go test it, and we'll see uh, if, if that's gonna be uh, even even better in a way. Uh, <laughs> but Tim, what do you uh, what do you expect from that game uh, in the in the coming? weeks or so do you think that's good that's just a fad and that's gonna go down or no nah, i think like i mentioned uh on the last show and actually right after last show uh so last week um we talked about the game uh, which was pretty much like uh, totally out there and we already showed that how popular back then it was on the twitch rankings among the most um uh, among the viewership um and then we went to LAN ets which is the land party here in, in montreal uh, that had their yearly edition and uh, all the pcs there were basically all switched to that game so you have all those brands that go there to exhibit and showcase either their hardware or their console stuff or whatever and basically everyone had the game on like everyone even the local telcos that were exhibiting they had it on all their systems uh that's that was pretty much it it was total uh, must have been like work. a must have been like a technical work like oh damn like this game is huge we can't have fortnite there we have to choose this one and i guess like they get Installing the game just before the show, it's like, oh, yeah, we, we need to have it, we need to have it. <laughs> well, yeah, you need I mean, uh, of course, like, uh, the if anyone was uh, connected to the internet in that week before, everyone saw the trailers, everyone read all the reviews, uh, everyone watched the streams, everyone wants to play it, right? So, and, um, you know, on those LAN parties, people are not just there for the local games and the local tournaments. And obviously, there might not have been an Apex tournament at that time because you know it's too fresh and there's no well, there's no plan to, to no, organize. There's right? no plan to to yeah to run it. But in that case, the guys are there to, to to play it and they want to try it out. So I mean, it's a good marketing thing to do to have the game loaded on your PC. Yeah, that's it. Uh, speaking of uh, competition about uh, Apex, they'll they will be releasing the battle pass, which will be like the season pass mm -hmm. and so on in the next few weeks, apparently. And and the funny part was. When I was um, running down to what we wanted to talk about the show tonight, if you look for Apex Legends on DuckDuckGo or Google.com, the first ad that shows up is Fortnite. Oh, someone uh, <laughs> was clever to buy some uh, AdWords or whatever. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, it's part of the war, and I'm sure Apex Legends is uh, spending money on that too. Uh, it's just the lottery of who bids the highest, and that's how Google make, makes his money, so... And I guess uh, does that go as well? So, well, that's, uh, that's it. <laughs> if if you look again, okay, I just I just made a test. Uh, I went I went on uh, the, the go and say battle royale. I was expecting to have the movie popping up. Uh, no, it's actually H one Z one that pops up. Yeah, what are you? And then it's uh, PUBG. Actually, we have a different result. Really? Well, yeah, I guess. Yeah, for me, it's uh, <laughs> I have the movie on IMDb called Battle Royale from 2000. <laughs> have the that's, the third, page. that's the third result for me. Well, we have a different DuckDuckGo, I guess. Totally and I'm using from Chrome, using from... Chrome too? Chrome, eh? Ah, yeah, see? Yeah, it's ah, that's interesting. I'm just in Canada, Canada French. So I am Canada English. Why. I'm Canada English. Which is... No, no, it's switch, actually switched off, so I have English results to add. Uh, I don't know. Oh, maybe sense. English is your first language. Uh, yeah, and I... And I have English. And I blocked the ads. You seem to be seeing the ad. It yeah. doesn't make any sense. We have the same ad block. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> who cares? Someone got clever enough to, <laughs> to hack the system here. Um, yeah, so that's it. Uh, that was uh, that was it. Today in Montreal, there was the Rainbow Six Invitational, uh, which is basically the highlight of the Rainbow Six season. Uh, it is the highlight of the Rainbow Six season. This is the highlight of Ubisoft as well. This is their biggest ever esport tournament they have two million in cash prize uh 
Uh, there's 16 teams from all around the world. And when we went there, I think you have the, yeah, the pictures. When we went there, it was uh, this morning. So that was the first out of the three days where they do play some of the most interesting and most vital games. Uh, mm -hmm. So we went there. That was a f a Fnatic against uh, Nusa something. Uh, yeah, some Korean guys. Noza, uh, Noza Rango, Noza yeah. Rena, anyway. And that was that was fun to watch. That was uh, quite interesting. And that's in the in the in Montreal. So that's right here in Montreal. So that's why we uh, we took the opportun the opportunity to go there. And mm -hmm. it was a it was a good thing. So what did I, I did like it? I did like the the way they set up the system. They uh, they were displaying uh, the things in the corridors as well. It was like you no, know, just just fun stuff yeah. about the different uh, class and type of people. Uh, what was your highlight for this morning, Tim? Uh, so it was uh, it was pretty nice. I was uh, definitely impressed by. I think we see it not well, on that picture, but actually the next one um, about the size of the screen. Um, so they had basically, you know, sometimes in those tournaments they have uh, two screens on each side with some kind of like construction stuff, and then the main screen in the middle and stuff like that. So what they did this time is like uh, they had this one one piece of a screen, and that was really impressive. It was the size and width of the whole uh, the whole arena there. Okay, it's not a soccer stadium, so it's smaller. It's a hockey arena. It's um, much, much tighter together. Still, the screen is probably about, I don't know, uh, 80 meters large or something like that. It's a screen I'd like to have in my living room. Uh, well, well, if, if you, if you fit, live in a castle, <laughs> <laughs> it would, if it would fit. But um, yeah, that um, that was one of the cool things of this morning. Um, it was also quite interesting that you could not see the players. Uh, they were playing behind that kind of like a cardboard, like a structural thing with screens there. So everybody was uh, behind and you could not even see them come up there on the stage. Like the teams that were playing didn't come from those tracks on the left and the right. I think those are mostly for... They, they do come in when they enter, but in between the rounds, yeah, they, don't exit, you, they don't go you out don't, you and don't come see back them from or anything. One. So they, they're just hidden behind, which is kind of weird. That, uh, it's kind of like you're... I mean, when you go to some place, it's not just for looking at screens. It's like nice to see the people too. So for for me, that was a bit of an interesting setup. Um, other than that, I I liked how it was presented. I liked the flags of all the teams that are part of the tournament on the left and the right. Um, commentary there was in English, and I saw there uh, was a second commentary station. I suppose it's for French. They have two. So so oh, was, as it's know. the biggest one for for Ubisoft, and yep. it's being made here in Montreal. So yeah, actually, Rainbow Six Siege was developed in Montreal, if I'm if I'm correct. Like not totally, but mainly. Mm. And the the fact that it's actually they have stream official stream in English and French, and I think they have like eight other channels. I think yeah. they have Thai a Thai version as well. Oh yeah, and oh yeah, actually right now there's like sixty thousand people watching it. Uh, this is going on strong. This is at uh, the ground, uh, the ground floor. So that's one of the main desks that they, they do have. Uh, it was interesting to to get there. Yeah, uh, that was a it's a it's a nice tournament. Uh, I mean, like uh, you'd have to stay the whole weekend. Uh, probably the the highlight would be on Sunday, right? Yeah. So, so Sunday would be the final. Yeah. We'll, we'll see by then who is still there. Uh, from what we saw, Fnatic was not doing well at all. Uh, the Korean guys were really good. Uh, like I mentioned there, there was this uh, one player, recycle, recycle, not, not recycle, something like that. Sounds a bit like uh, The guy was really good. Like uh, pretty much the whole, the whole game, he only died once. <laughs> uh, so I was pretty, that was pretty impressive. Uh, it's uh, actually when you go to that kind of tournaments that you see the, the level of some of the guys, uh, especially if you're used to watch Twitch streams of uh, Twitch entertainers and streamers streaming their own games. Uh, it's not that kind of level, obviously, because they're there to do the entertaining part. But when you see actually um, games at that level, it's uh, really impressive. I mean, you just don't have the time to see it. The guy is already either headshot or dead or whatever. Uh, it's really nice. Uh, then again, Rainbow Six, you like it or you don't like it. It's uh, its own type of game. Um, last time I saw it as a tournament was at uh, DreamHack in Montreal. Uh, where they also had a stage there, um, and uh, I think the, yeah, I usually don't watch Rainbow Six. It's not kind of like it's not one of those esports that I watch. It's not. Like, uh, but we still went to the to the show here. So yeah. <laughs> I mean, like uh, I mean, it's not every week there's a tournament and a world global global final going on in your town. So 
Sure. Especially with sure, two million dollar in cash price, mm -hmm. uh, if I remember correctly from uh, from the announcement, forty percent of that cash price will go to the first team, and then everything is split up with the uh, with the following teams. So that's uh, that's pretty good uh, already. And this is the biggest esport tournament ever in the history of Ubisoft. So that's something to to note for sure. Uh, they're launching actually the season four mm -hmm. uh, launch uh, two days ago uh, for Rainbow Six Siege. So that's going to be interesting to see how they have Rainbow Six Siege, uh, the new The Division 2 coming out, and they have uh, Far Cry New Dawn just being released. That's a lot of games being re released at the same time. Uh, not all on the same concept, uh, not all on the esports side as well, but uh, that's a pretty uh, pretty busy year. Yeah, those guys are busy, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Aerotrax, do you play any games so far? Uh, <laughs> I play what, man? Yeah, uh, 3D Mark doesn't count. I didn't play even though it's, it's on Steam. Uh, <laughs> I, I killed some zombies, but nothing, nothing of the new stuff. Uh, what was the last game you played? Uh, just as I said, Call of Duty, and I sometimes play World of Warcraft, but that's an ancient game, so. <laughs> that's why you purchase a new graphics card for. Right, right. I purchase it for benching. <laughs> I don't buy stuff for gaming ever. <laughs> Uh, so so all games like WoW and Super Pi. I think we we're starting to see a pattern right there. <laughs> I think we are, yes. <laughs> yeah, that that that's crazy. Um I think that's pretty much it for the invitational. The stream will be on uh whole weekend on Rainbow Six uh official channel on Twitch. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're even promoted on the on the main page. Uh next big news in the gaming world is ESL which is basically running most of the big shows actually in, they're, in they're running this yeah actually they're, they're running the, the production for yeah. it right all the production at the invitation is being run is run by uh, esl uh they're rebranding so they're they're gonna have a new logo and the way they were showing it i don't know if you can just read out to, you, to the website so it's esl gaming a journey something mm -hmm. and they're rebranding and they have this new color on top of it they used to be blue a lot yeah. the green stuff yeah, yeah the, this one here. Okay. So they used to have this blue logo, like almost Intel blue logo. And now they're going for the neon yellow. Uh, yeah, it's pretty... Uh... That, that's going to be something quite special. And, and yes, it, it went a long way in the 19 years of the, of the company. It's very impressive that they, uh, they achieved that. We have a lot of our uh, friends and contacts that actually do work at ESL as well. Uh, it's been quite a journey. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is just the beginning and I'm pretty sure they will be trying to reach out further than just within the online audience. I'm pretty sure they will be trying to get into uh, more deals with TV. Actually, the deal from streaming esports from ESL on Facebook is not an exclusive deal anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, that was actually released uh, this week on Forbes as well. So there will be some new things going on. I would love to see one day uh, esports like a full channel like ESPN but just for esports at this like international level that will be insane we have that online uh, having that on the cable TVs will maybe uh, push out the mass that still think esports is not a, the, the best sport ever uh, <laughs> when we do think that this is the best sport ever just after overclocking of course uh, <laughs> actually uh, I, I'm surprised it, uh, it, it did took some time right because initially they um Initially, when they got acquired, uh, at least a piece of the company, but that uh, Swedish satellite or media mm -hmm. company, um, I, I thought that it would quickly go over and be able to basically broadcast what they are doing on ESL TV, basically already uh, straight onto the satellite. But it didn't really happen this way, and they did deals with ESPN and other sports channels. So um, definitely went a long way. It's going to be an interesting change. So completely dropping the logo with the blue white colors. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. You know that um, that background with the yellow. It makes me think to either uh, rebrandings or like uh, design stuff that uh, Corsair and Logitech have been doing uh, over the past two three years. Oh, like the Corsair um, gaming thing. And well, the, it's, uh, it's similar, right? Like so the Corsair right? boxes are all yellow, and they all have just the Corsair logo in one single color. Um, and then uh, you have the same with Logitech, which is not. Yellow, it's kind of like a bluish, or like I don't know how you describe. Oh, the, the Logitech, G, yeah, the, yeah, the, the Logitech the G, yeah. color stuff, or the Logitech, all the gaming stuff they do basically, and even the regular accessories. Um, same thing, just picking one color. It's one of those pastel kind of colors as well. It's it's just 
kind of similar thing uh, very simple very flat design um yes i was already pretty flat designed actually even with the three previous colors but now it's gonna be even more like uh uh, more even more simplified that's gonna be interesting like especially for yellow it's a very hard color i don't uh, know if they're gonna use it actually all the time like i mean like even if you look at the okay they use it for that clip where it's black white and then the yellow stands out but i don't know how how they're gonna use it all the time like even if you look at the website which i guess is already updated to the new template right um they do use the yellow for you know some of the stuff in the green it's uh, neon but, yellow and neon green. Yeah, that's but, that's very hard to find the exact color for that. It's super hard. Yeah. Okay. So I don't think I don't know if that banner is going to be. Um. But yeah, it's a it's a different style. You like it or you don't. Uh, it definitely catches your attention, and that's probably the reason behind it. So yeah, let's go with that. Uh, why not? I'm not too sure about the new logo though. I prefer the old one. So yeah. Yes, I I R F T W. Yes, that was what we were referring to for the Corsair logo. Like the logo they tried to to go for that was uh, all yellow. Then they revert back to the Corsair logo, and then now all the boxes are actually uh, yellow. Uh, yeah, as well. it's a um, basically flat design. I don't know. I, I'm wondering who is actually choosing these colors. There, there must be some some numbers I, know, I, behind to choose that yellow. I do know, like when you do anything printing, you pay by the color, and the more colors you put, the more you have to print. Uh, of course, for flyers and stuff like that, it probably doesn't matter uh, because it's just regular printers and stuff like that. But once you, when you are doing very high volume or like a very large scale prints. Um, basically a product like a like a mouse or yeah 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 or like uh, even if you look at the what a hyperx printed and put on the on that uh, pyramid in in Las Vegas is the same I mean once you're doing very large prints the lowest amount of colors uh, the better for pricing and it's the same for t-shirts and anything you're doing like that and uh, <laughs> and it's better to not fuck up the color as well <laughs> yeah it's a uh, black and white uh, is easy because black is black and white is no color or just white. Uh, and then anything else, the more variations, if you do gradients, if you do any kind of something like that, there's so many more chances that someone will get it wrong along the way. Uh, now also, if you do broadcast and TV, it's kind of like the same thing, getting your colors identical and the same kind of theme and the same uh, look and spirit and feel behind uh, whatever you're broadcasting. It's, it's a lot based on color and how it's uh, basically perceived once it's compressed or whatever. Um, so it is easier to do something with a watermark logo that is just black or just white like it is right now or like it was on that video they had on the on that journey website um so i mean the I logo assume... is still the logo is still black yeah the logo is still black but they used to have the one with the color or just just yeah. a white one uh, they already had sort of switched to that and completely dumped the one with the colors it was only used for print and logos and stuff and maybe your t-shirts and jersey so and that was your 20 minutes worth of web design yeah it's not web design <laughs> of, it's just right uh, color picking <laughs> i guess why they picked it uh, it's probably there's other reasons uh brands rebrand all the time it's uh, even recommended for websites to change your design every two years to keep people you know like up for new stuff and nowadays i mean we're a generation that switches quick between everything so i mean look at games yeah like uh it goes very quickly out of trend so you have to constantly reinvent how you look and i guess that's part of it it's been a while that they didn't last time that really they did update esl was when they changed to the esl gaming and they had you know the conversion from the old platform but they had the oh, whole yeah. esl play and all the tournaments and all the ladder boards to the new one and that was really the the change that's when Intel started to also back um all the, the yeah, IEMs the whole the all IEM. it, it, it came at that time so now it's a it's a different era basically that's good. I mean, it's been 19 years they exist, so it's been uh, well oh, done. Yeah, it's, it's pretty well done. Yep. All right. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for this week. Uh, news update about the next events. Uh, we will be going to PAX East. We announced that last. I mean, he announced that last week, and uh, we will maybe be at TwitchCon Europe in Berlin in the mid-April. So you have to let us know if you plan to go there, and if yes, you should take your ticket very fast because at 75 bucks uh, euros the weekend 
Right downtown in Berlin, uh, that might be very uh, very busy. I can see arrow tracks already. Oh, 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 Twitch.tv <laughs> slash. <laughs> like, I'll be there, huh? but only for the beers. <laughs> <laughs> well, that works too. Yeah. We can do a, like a local gathering uh, just one evening if we're there. Why not? Can and it's fun. supposed to be, I can't remember if it's Friday, Saturday or Saturday, Sunday. But if we go I there, that means, <laughs> that means... That means we have to do the show from there as well. Yeah, no, that's good. I mean, it, it, it would be nice. Hopefully we can make it. It would be great. Uh, especially at that time in Europe, there are other events. So if we can combine everything within two weeks, uh, it would be perfect. Pretty pretty chill. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think uh, that's it. We can take questions from the live chat, but we'll cut the recording. Uh, don't forget, you can find us back on twitch.tv, overclocking TV every week on Friday afternoon in uh, North America or evening in Europe. The time is supposed to be around like 2 p.m. Eastern and 7 p.m. Europe, but usually we start be, be like around 8, something yeah. like that. Uh, that's okay. Also, if you guys are interested in listening to this uh, as a, just an audio format, you can. Uh, it's available on pretty much all the podcasting platforms out there. It's, uh, I think, at 6 right now on the counter, uh, so you can find it. Uh, like ultimately. Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, Spotify, like. yeah, all that. So you can just check it, search for OMG, um, and you will find it. And uh, just make sure you subscribe over there, listen to it over there. You can leave comments, uh, preferably on the YouTube channel. That's where we monitor it on Facebook page. And um, that's it for my little promotion. Good. Well, uh, that's pretty much. Aerotracks, where can we find you if people want to talk to you? On the HW Bot forums, probably. <laughs> Under Aerotracks, you use the same name everywhere. Same nickname, yes. Perfect. That's that's uh, that's very good. Like this. Uh, well, thank you, guys. That was awesome. Uh, I'm just gonna stay here for a few more minutes, just taking your questions, but setting the recording. See you next week. <laughs> Where's the recording stuff? Ah, yeah.